Fly Rigger podcast. This is episode six, and we're going to be talking with Mr. Brian Wall. If you didn't catch it last week, we had on Steve Adams, and he focused on behavior versus emotions, how we get through the valley by managing our behavior and choosing our thoughts and choosing to believe truth rather than our emotions or what we're feeling. And so this week, we're going to have Mr. Brian Wall of Worship Tutorials, and Dave Jones is going to take us in. Brian, thank you so much for being here, man. Uh, you have been such a blessing to us over the years. Um, doing this introduction is an absolute pleasure. Uh, Brian grew up in Fairview, Oklahoma. He's mm -hmm. been married yep. for 13 years to his wife, Angela, has a beautiful uh, five-year-old named Seth. He is the founder of Worship Tutorials. He has an MBA from OKCU. The right? Yep. yep. Um, That's right. Currently lives in Chapel Hill, has 375,000 YouTube subscribers. Um, he's got a vision <laughs> yep. to create awesome. uh, authentic and excellent worship in every church in the world. He provides resources yeah. to churches to create excellent worship environments. He's equipping worship leaders all around the world with authentic teaching. Uh, he loves to inspire worship leaders and team members and provide excellent training resources to worship leaders and team members. When it comes to teaching the guitar to worship leaders around the world, Brian Wall is your man. That's right. Welcome, Brian. <laughs> Woo! All right. Thank yeah. you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, as we as we journey through these peaks and valleys of, of building worship tutorials and yep. managing your emotions, there's lots of peaks and valleys. Um, yeah. Let's, can you talk about the, the highest peak and the lowest low so far of, of what you've experienced? Uh, yeah. Well with worship tutorials. So, um, what do you want first peaks or valleys? Let's start with the peaks. Okay. Peaks. So, uh, one of them actually behind me, if you can see it in the camera back there, that is a, a plaque from, uh, from YouTube itself. So they call these things, uh, what are they? I forget what they call them. Um, anyway, you, they'll give them to you when you reach a certain level of subscribership. So for a hundred thousand YouTube subscribers, you get the silver play button. Um, and so, you know, I've done three and a half times past that at this point, but uh, receiving that was, was a pretty special experience for me because it took, it took like eight years for me to get from when I started YouTube to, to that many subscribers. And it was a lot of hard work. Um, and so I don't know, just to, to receive something like that from YouTube itself. Uh, I put it up there on the wall. So it's kind of, it's like in every video now. Mm. Um, but that was a pretty special, a pretty special thing to receive just sort of a attaboy from YouTube. Um, but it, it also signified to me, like, this thing is like, I can, I, I think I can really, you know, I can really do this. So I, I, I received that before I ever went, like, so I, I do worship tutorials as my full-time focus now, but that happened before that ever happened. And it kind of helped, it, it helped inspire me to say, or it helped uh, sort of encourage me to say, like, I can, this is something that I can do with my life. This could be like my career, my life's work. So that was a pretty cool peak the other another thing that that always inspires me or that always makes me feel like this is why I do what I do is I'll often um, run into people who engage with the content that we make at worship tutorials whether it's videos or the products we make for churches and um, sometimes it's in person sometimes it's via the internet but whenever I hear people say you know you taught this or you provided this and I applied it to my church or my ministry and it made a difference right away um, that's always a very encouraging thing to hear. So I, those are the two, the two things that stand out in my mind is like peaks. Those, those two things come to mind first. Oh. Awesome, man. And so, um, as you're riding the peak, you know, we talk about peaks and valleys here at Ply Rigger yeah. and it's like, you know, you're on a peak, but when you're on a peak, guess what's going to be happening? You're going to be hitting in a valley, right? right. And when you're in a valley, you're going <laughs> to be on a peak. And so, you know, the idea is to have your peaks and valleys, not as <clears throat> deep and as long. So, yeah. you know, so when you're riding that peak and you're coming into Valley, what's some Valley experiences that you've had? Uh, one, I debated, I debate whether I should talk, share this, but <laughs> there was very, in the very beginning, I used to, uh, so the YouTube channel that I have used to be just, I would teach how to play guitar. 
So I'd take a song and teach how to play it. And then, but I would also provide chord charts for that song. And uh, I was not educated in uh, what is legal as far as sharing uh, chord charts. So I thought, I assumed that if I, if I made the chart myself and shared it for free, that that was fine, but that is not the case. I later found out. So I was sharing these charts and there were, there are lots of other people who do this as well. Um, and then I got an email from Capitol Records. And so Capitol Records is, uh, it, it, they, they control like the Christian, they have a Christian music group and they, they control the publishing for most of the, the Christian worship music that we sing. So I got an email from them saying, uh, who gave you permission to share all these things? Because, and then I later realized you have to, you have to obtain royalty licenses. And even if you give stuff away, you're legally, you're supposed to, to pay royalties. And so um, I immediately started working with them. I said, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't know that I was not doing something I was supposed to do. What can I do to make it right? But I, uh, I chose to take everything down, like the website, everything, I took it down uh, in that period of time until I worked it. And I, I communicated, and it actually turned into an opportunity because uh, it, it allowed me the opportunity now to work with Capital. And so, um, and they're great people to work with. And so we have a relationship now where, you know, doing every, we're doing things the way that they're supposed to be done. But in the beginning, uh, that was a huge learning experience for me too, because it, you know, ignorance is not an excuse. Right. So, um, and so I, but I tried to, I didn't try to use it as one. It's just that in that moment, it kind of got me. That was, that was a pretty scary experience for me. Um, another experience uh, that, that sort of about, this doesn't have to do with, it kind of has to do with worship tutorials, but not like specifically worship tutorials itself. Years ago, I was, uh, I also lead worship. So it's, I've, I've been a worship leader full time in the past, you know, in the past, and I still lead worship on a weekly basis at my church, more of a contract position. Uh, but years ago I was, um, and I, I shared this in a video. We did a video series at worship tutorials about, about how to heal when you've been hurt by a church. Uh, so there's a series of videos in that, in that vein. It seems like a lot of church staff people have stories to tell about um, about being hurt by churches, and uh, I had one as well. I was let go from a church years ago in a way that was really painful, that didn't seem very fair. One of the things I shared in those videos, though, is that there's all, there's two sides to every story, um, and so. Uh, but yeah, being let go in a way that was really hurtful from a church was a pretty painful experience for me. Um, so, and it, and it did affect definitely because it's part of what I do with worship tutorials, being a worship leader is part of that identity. So what, what yeah. did it feel like? Like take us into the feelings, like what did you experience? Not just that it was hurtful, but what type of pain, what, what was it that you felt inside? Um, I, well, the first thing I had to do, I've, I've talked with a lot of people before and still do because it, I mean, it's just a common thing who have gone through similar situations. And a lot of times what happens is uh, church staff people will, um, or former church staff people will internalize that and they'll project it against the church itself. So you have a lot of people who are angry with, with church and who say, I don't want anything to do with church in the future or God, you know, who, who become bitter and angry with God. So the first thing I had to do was, um, I had I, I made an internal decision like this was a, a person that did this to me like a human being it wasn't the church yeah. so I I separated that pretty quickly and that really helped me because I'm very very passionate about the church and worship tutorials exist to equip the church uh, and so um, I I knew right away and worse and, and at that time like things were starting to pick up some steam for me with worship tutorials. And so I knew right away, like if I let this, if I let this experience um, sort of, you know, make me bitter against the church that it's gonna, it's gonna take this whole, what, what God is doing in my life over here is this experience is going to take it down. I, you know, I, I just, I thought right away, like this is an attack from, from the enemy trying to take down what God is doing in my life. So I tried to, and, and it was a hard thing to work through. Um, it took me, I didn't talk about it with people for a long time. I talked about it with a very select few people, uh, but I was able to plug into a church right after that though, that, that surrounded me with people that really helped me through it as well. Those, so, go ahead. 
so when, when you're going through that, as, as John just asked, and you just talked about it a little bit, Brian, mm-hmm. um, there's a forgiveness side to that, right? Right. So walk me through that, that other part, because a lot of times you can look at it and understand that even forgiveness, you're still in the valley, right? Because you're wrestling and you're there, there's ego involved and there's hurt, yeah. there's pain involved. And you got to get to a place where you can not only sense within yourself that you've forgiven that person, but then a lot for a lot of people, a lot of times you have to be able to actually say it out loud. And a lot of times on top of that to that person. So walk me through the forgiveness <laughs> side of the equation. Yeah. So it, yeah. Um, that's taken me some time too. There was some anger that I dealt with there. Like for a long time, when I would talk about it, I would get pretty passionate, uh, about that, but just because of the way it was handled. So not only the way that I was let go, but the way it was, ha- the way the church chose to, to communicate that I felt was, was, um, not appropriate. And so, uh, yeah, I've, you know, and I've never, um, it's, you mentioned that I've never actually talked to all of the people involved since then, but I have like, I've, you know, they, we all live in the same area of town. So if I would, I've run into people before and uh, I've come to a place where, and I too, I had to, I also had to realize like, I just, I, I, I know my side of the story that there's another side of the story that I don't know. And there's all, you know, we, there's a lot of things that go on that we don't know right. that, that I'm sure there are many factors that if I knew the whole story, it would make a lot more sense in my head, but I, I've just, I don't know it. And I, you know, maybe I will one day, maybe I won't, but, um, yeah, that's a good question. I, and I, and it's not like I've gone to all those people involved and said, you know, shook their hand and said, we're good now, but, but I've come to that place sort of in my heart, I guess. Yeah. Well, it's so interesting though, because I mean, is is when you talk about that, one of the things I think about is when we go back into the Bible, is the story of Joseph, and all these bad things happen to him, right? And you can say for a lot of them, they were they were outside of his control. And the part that really messes with you is at the end of the story Mm -hmm. when he looks at his brothers and says, "Man, guys, it's all good because Mm -hmm. what was allowed to happen, God used me to save the whole our whole family and this whole country." And it's yeah. okay, we're good. I think that's the hope that we have when we go through a forgiveness thing and we're in that valley, is that the ultimate that we know when we're right back where we need to be is when I can look at somebody and say, you know, what you did to me sucked and it hurt and I yeah. hated it. But you know what? It's all good because look at what God did. He actually used that pain to do something amazing. That's good. Yeah, that's, and that's a great point um, because that's absolutely what happened through this story because – after that happened, uh, I got a, I, that's after that, I got a job at New Hope Church where I, where I currently serve. Um, and that, that being able to go into that, I can definitely look back and see that God was using that to lead me on a journey because it was at New Hope that I was equipped and trained and mentored by a lot of people, um, that have helped me become, you know, who I am today, the, 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 the skill set that I have. Uh, leadership for leading worship, which is translated into, you know, what I do with worship tutorials. So that's, that story is just like, it's crazy how true that is, you know, right. I have, I'm not saving an entire nation that's starving. But. <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah. right. Can or you are you? you? Ah. Hey, out of, we, we do need to start to wind down, but something I wanted sure. to, to ask is as you were in that transition process, you said it yeah. was a really good experience for you. Can you give us something that you learned in that process, like some nugget of wisdom that you go, this helped me as I began to move forward, and this could help you if you're in a similar situation with conflict or struggling with bitterness, how it could affect sure. your business, something practical we could take with. Yeah. Um, so one thing is that I talked about, especially if it's dealing with a church, uh, I would say to people who are involved in churches and church leadership, if if you've been burned by a, by a church, like never ever let that um never never let that that take away your passion for the church because i believe the church is the hope of the world and uh that's the way it's laid out in the bible that's what jesus taught about the church so um if if that if you're in that context don't let that don't let that experience uh sort of you know pour, pour water on your fire for the church uh another one is um and in, and in, in what what David said about about the story of Joseph, like you know, Joseph was able to look back in his life and, and see God moving 
in his life. And it's hard to do that when you're in the middle of, you know, Joseph wasn't thinking about that when he was being sold into slavery or when Potiphar was, you know, when his wife was, was lying about him. If you know that story of the Bible, that's all that, that stuff's all in there. Joseph wasn't probably in that situation saying, you know, this is terrible, but I know God's going right. to something awesome. Is gonna <laughs> but, but the truth about, about, uh, you know about God. If you're a if, if you're a Christ follower, if you're a believer, um, the Bible promises us that everything happens so that that good will. You know, God uses everything to bring glory to His name. And I and I believe that you know when we go through things that are really difficult, one day we will be able to look back on it and say, I can see how that experience shaped, formed, gave me an opportunity, whatever, that allowed me to do something today that I wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. And I can say that is true in that, that situation in my life. That's a really hard thing to do, though. I often, sometimes I kind of, you hear that teaching a lot, and I kind of cringe because I know what it feels like to be in that moment. I think people who are in that moment don't want to hear that right now. Uh, but it's true. Um, and you just have to weather the storm, which is not easy. You got to bring people into your life that's another thing too. I'd say like surround yourself with people who will, who will walk through it with you. Don't, don't go through stuff like that alone. So. Awesome. So, uh, thanks so much for being on the podcast today, Brian. Um, there's any Bet. person out there that's involved in a church in any way, specifically with the worship team, I guess is how they get involved with worship tutorials. You know, how do they get involved with you and, and, sure. and, um, yeah. Sure. Well, the website is worship tutorials.com. And uh, at the website, you can find, you know, a lot of the stuff that we offer for churches. We offer a lot of tools uh, for, for churches specifically in the area of worship leading and, and uh, the worship department. Um, so you can find our products there on YouTube. Just type in worship tutorials uh, and you'll find it. Um, and so our YouTube channel, we upload content. You know, I'd say we upload probably between three and five videos a week. And it, and it covers things from all... All, it covers things from like, like playing through a song, teaching how to play a song to leadership principles, uh, stuff about like, you know, highlighting the products that we make. Um, so YouTube and on the website are the two places to engage with us the best. Awesome, man. We really appreciate your time. Thanks, Brian. All right. All right. Thanks, All right yeah. See you. See you. See you. It's an honor. <clears throat>